This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. See that right there? That's good old grease, my favorite. Let's go work on an oven. At least it's got some pizza in it. Nope, not that one. This Rama Jamma. 512 is a set point. Actual temp 470. What it does, it hits uh, 512 ish and then it shuts down. All these are is freaking furnaces that cook pizza. The building's being pulled into a negative, but I don't think that's what's causing it. Let's get to wait till she gets up to temp here. We just hit set point, just shut off. Well, this is where it will usually act up, as you can see. But the heat comes right back on immediately. There we go. I lost that heat really fast, probably because they're sucking everything out of the building like they are. About a three degree variance. Dropping. Comes right on. It's not going to act stupid right away. Now, I did have this panel off because I was in here checking my wires. Because, like I said, this is nothing special. Got a draft motor, gas valve, ignition module, another solenoid. Got a pilot. And then you've got the burner. This has been replaced once. I built this shield the last time because it was getting too much heat in there. This right here, there's an electric heater element like you'd see on an electric, old, old electric furnace. The coil is 24 volts. Didn't see anything loose in there. Amperage was 0.6. Really not seeing nothing, right? Just give a moment. Now I had changed the pilot assembly on this once before. We could have a flame sensor issue. It's hard to say. Okay, let's see what we get here. We're gonna go ahead and go to ground. I'm not a big fan of that. Thermostat, it's getting 25 volts. Watch it go out here in a second. Actually, it's staying 25. Okay. Thermostat's not cutting now. Um, they must be cutting the solenoid and killing the main valve. You see it? We're constantly on there. So, what I think we're doing is we're energizing this right here, which is a solenoid. And, you know, it's not like I work on these every day, but certain circumstances that uh, cause us to have to work on it. If your solenoid, technically it's running right now. That's kind of weird. Yeah, so we'll watch this here. Like that right there, we'll see the old trickaroo. That's how I check solenoids on everything and then we'll watch this right here. See ya. Just went out and the uh, amperage went away. So it's cycling that valve right there. Yep, there it went again. So yeah, of course now it's working perfectly fine. It's cycling every time. I'll move this 65 inch screw. The temperature control is right here. This is what's cycling our temperature on and off or cycling our solenoid on and off. Yeah, schematic be kind of nice. If we can read it. But just tiny. Nothing's cutting now. That's what sucks. Nothing's cutting now. Cycling just fine. So even though I can't see it, the pilot's probably staying lit the whole time. So we're not flame sense. This is completely solid here. So I could drill a hole in there so they can see the blank. That way we know when it doesn't work correctly, we'll know whether we're having a failure on that or are we having a problem with it getting to here. Because they're claiming that we're getting power. It's saying on the display. Now that's, who knows if they're really noticing that or not. They could just be saying, yep, 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 agree with you, agree with you. With heat being on, see how the heat there on? They may not really be on, they may not notice the difference. It's hard to say. Yep, there it is. It's that one right there. That's your that's your one that's kicking it on and off. All right, we're just going to go ahead and print one up here. That way we know what we got. 120 volt solenoid that makes it simple. Might just label this thing over here so we know where it goes. All right, so we're going to make one that says from temp control. Abbreviate it as best as we can. This thing ain't acting up. May just try to clean the pile and assembly. I don't know what else to do to it. And that would be the only thing but shut it down. And as much as this thing runs, it would not surprise me if that's what's going on. All right, we're down to a chilly 320 degrees. 
have been nice if it would have acted up. Let's see if we can't get this thing out of here. Loosen this turd up. Mm, good, they didn't put one in there. Got to turn the gas off though. <laughs> Which they conveniently put that back here where you can't really get into it very well either. And instead of putting multiples, they just put one. That'll probably fall off later, but at least I tried. So there you go. We'll go ahead and get in there and clean that up the best we can. I mean, it's the most logical thing that's causing a possible problem, but you can't be sure when it don't act up. The easiest thing to do is get a little brush in there, clean it up. It's a brand new brush. Don't have any grease on it or anything else. As you can see, there's not a lot to this thing. You've just got that solenoid that's cycling. And here you've got two sheets that in there. And it uh, blows it on in, and it has two distributor type plates that the heat comes out. Not a lot to it. But when it don't act up, what do you do? So we're going to go with the most common thing, pile it being dirty, uh, the flame sensor anyhow, and uh, put her back together and move on. And if we have to come back, we have to come back. At least we did something. There's nothing I can do about it if it's not going to act up while I'm here. This thing here is not going to stay shut. It's kind of critical that it does. I may go out and grab me a screw and put it right in there. That way it holds in place. All right, let's turn this thing back on. Fat. Should be able to see Did that fan quit? motor kick on. Should run. This heat is on. I thought I told you it would call, but I'll be Okay, so that little doing? heater must warm up. Right. See, that heater warms up, it yeah. should come on. Come on, hot dog. Maybe that's what's going on with it. I think I got everything back the way it was. Thermostat and that. See how heat shows it's being on. Lower. All right, let's get our probes out and start checking for voltages. Let's see where we're missing voltage at. Bottom of it. Yeah. The heat from the bottom. But it only heats from the top. It all heats from the top. But that, that heat get it browner than that. That ain't even brown at all. I don't know. I didn't build it. I'm just saying that the heat comes from the top. From what I see, I may be wrong. I don't. I don't know nothing about ovens. <laughs> <laughs> we have everything turned on, so it sounds to me we might have finally got it backed up. So. Let's get this sucker back together. And that was an S with a sucker like a lollipop. And see if we, our problem is right here, because that might be our issue. See, it says heaps on. Let's see, now that we went through and actually figured out what one's what, let's go ahead and see if we got power there. Like that, into here. I have no power coming out of this. Let's check these things. That's closed, or at least it appears to be closed. Closed. Do have 120 volts on it. 120 volts on that. 120 volts on that. Checking between it, no voltage. So, checking across it, they do show to be closed. Or you can check it ground on both sides, and if it's on both sides, and it's a 120 volt circuit, not a 230 volt circuit, you know, it's getting through. 230 volt circuit, you always have 120 volts under because they're only breaking one leg. Here, all I unhooked was these two wires here. Those I didn't unhook at all. And that's it. Now I can't see this very good. My nearsightedness is already screwed up. And with readers, I can't see that. It's all screwed up. But that contactor's pulled in. I'm not seeing that fan motor spin near as fast as what I think it should be spinning. I think the centrifugal switch on that is not making because the motor's acting up. And uh, that could be our issue. That if that motor's not doing its thing, it won't allow power to get on through to the next couple things. 208. Or cooking now, it looks like. 
Yeah, at the bottom, I, I had to shut gas off to work on this one. All right, so I'm going through here checking my stuff, and I had a wire fall out. See that? So I'm gonna turn the power off, get that crammed back up underneath there. I swear I had voltage. Well, I would have had voltage because it's coming from the top. I think we single phased our motor. I'm pretty sure it's three phase. I'm gonna go kill power and get that butt up in there and see how it runs. That was tight, so I don't know how it fell out. They probably just didn't stick it in far enough. I hate when that happens. Everybody trims these little puppies so short. Seem tight. You kind of tucked in all of these. Let's kick her back on, see what happens. Hopefully, it runs. Oh, look at that. That motor didn't sound very good. That definitely would be why that motor had to get up to full speed. Once that was up to speed, and boom. Now, as you noticed, we didn't do anything really much in there. But one of those wires must have been loose, and I bet you anything that that's what happened. That thing came out of there. Now that motor don't sound real healthy. I don't know if it's three phase. If it's three phase, then the motor screwed. Let's see what kind of juice we're pulling on the on the amperage here. Three point one. So I bet you it's single phase with a freaking capacitor in there, even though it's a three phase contactor, they're probably just feeding other things. Either way, that would have caused some issues in that motor. I mean, if it's working, I know how this how this is. If it's working, leave it go. I do I, I do see no capacitors. So there's no capacitor on that thing unless it's on the other side. Things back together. Got to snip those off, and uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, time will tell if that was the only thing. But cleaning the pilot surely didn't hurt it none. Got that screw in there to help keep that door shut. I mean, there's a little bit of gap there, but I don't feel any air pushing out, so it's uh, mainly shoving that pilot or the uh, it's mainly shoving that burner gas out the front. Uh, the big motor back here is actually driving it down. Uh, everything's back on. That originally had a spacer behind it to keep it from getting too hot, and I have a feeling somebody may have removed that because it definitely is a lot of heat back here. It's just not a good spot for electronics. You would have figured they would have put it down low. We're going to use... Nope. However, those are the K2s. Here we go. Got to admit, these things are pretty wicked. They can cut more than wire ties. They can cut some really good, good stuff. So we got a little hole here, and you can actually see the little LED light that's not lit, which is good, directly head on. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but this oven's not the prettiest thing in the world either. And I told him the owner before I did it, so it's not like I just drilled a hole right through his stuff without letting him know. And if it helps him diagnose what's going on, that's all he cares about. All right, so that was one of those tricky ones. I believe we got it. If not, we'll have to go back. They know what to do. That's the whole thing. We did communications with the uh, with the manager, so if it does act up, they know where to start looking at. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, you know what to do. Till next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.